Good morning, you fine people. You fine person sitting right there. And all of you in the background, I see you there too. I'm watching you. That's a lie. Did I creep you out? I can't see you. I have no idea who you are. I have no idea where you are. Let me know down below if you want if, if you want me to know. But other than that, hello anonymous eyeballs watching me on the internet. Uh, I am Trucker Josh, if you didn't know that, if you haven't figured that out. We're here in Minnesota right now, and uh, I'm just on my half hour break. Uh, we're going home, and I live near Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, which is straight north of the Minnesota-North Dakota state line. Just straight north up into Canada. Winnipeg is the capital city of Manitoba. I actually live outside the city. I'm not a big city person myself. I like the countryside. I like the privacy. But uh, here we are, living life. Putting it on the internet for you to watch. So sit back and relax. Enjoy the day. Uh, it's supposed to be a snowstorm rolling in. It's it's just starting to snow really lightly right now, but they're supposed to get up to 12 feet of snow today. I'm filming this on March 9th, 2019. Uh, videos are a little bit behind. I apologize for that. That's just, uh, just, I explained it in yesterday's video, just the way it works out for me to do it. I got 10 more minutes left and then I can hit the road. Because the government says I need a break. I'm not allowed to decide for myself how long my break should be. Uh, they, they decide for me. They tell me it has to be at least 30 minutes. 29 minutes is not enough of a break. 28 minutes? Forget it. You're not rested after 28 minutes? You need 30 minutes. The government says I have to stop for 30 minutes. That's the U.S. government. Canada, our government, they let us decide when our breaks will be and how long they'll be. As long as you take a break and check your load in reasonable intervals so that they can tell you're being responsible, like that, that's all you need. If you want to stop for 17 minutes for a break, go for it. That's awesome. You want to stop for 29 minutes and 30 seconds? Go for it. Canadian government doesn't care. American government, they're a little bit more uh, invasive, aren't they? They, they? they like to know what you're doing. They like to make sure they like to make sure you're following the rules and taking your breaks. Because taking a break is the law. You know, trucking is the only industry where you can actually get arrested and go to jail for working overtime. Did you know that? If I work overtime and I get caught, they will arrest me and bring me to jail. That's true in Canada, too. I don't know if they would bring me to jail. They might just fine me there. I might get a big fine and have to shut down there. But in the U.S., I'm pretty sure, correct me, my American friends, if I'm wrong. If you run over your hours, they'll arrest you, won't they? They'll put the cuffs on you. They're serious down here. They're serious. Take your breaks or else. <laughs> I love America, though. Great place, great place. I love this country, but don't break their rules. They're serious about them. I kind of wish I didn't have to take that half hour break because now the snow is starting to come down pretty heavy. And from all the reports, it's only supposed to get worse. I wish I could have taken that half hour and just kept driving so that I could get out of this weather. I didn't need a break yet, I was fine. Before I got to the Canadian border, I guess I could have taken the, the half hour break a little later. I just couldn't get all the way to the border before my eight hours were up. The way it works is in the US, you can only be on duty for eight hours before taking a half hour break. And you have to take a half hour break somewhere in there. And after you take your half hour, your 30 minutes, then you get another eight hours given to you before you need your next break. But all in all, you can only work 14 hours in the day. Then you have shut down you can only of those 14 hours you can only drive 11 of them so I couldn't get to the Canadian border within my eight hours I would need to have a break first unless if I wanted to break the law and risk them putting handcuffs on me I may be wrong on that maybe they won't arrest you for going overtime but I've heard that they would. I know it's breaking a serious law and you can get in a lot of trouble for it. I don't know if they'll actually pull out the cuffs. But I'm pretty harmless. I don't think they'd need to actually cuff me. I'd just yeah, go peacefully. But I wouldn't break the law to begin with. 
I am a guest in the United States and I intend to respect their laws while I'm here. They have their laws for a reason. Ah, oh, it's starting to snow even worse now as I'm talking. Oh, this is not good. This is not good. I better not get shut down. It's supposed to get better as we get closer to Canada, so let's just keep remembering and telling ourselves that. Things have progressed in a negative way. Dealing with quite a bit of snow now and dealing with drivers in front of me here that have no idea what they're doing. They have no idea that they need to keep their tires in the tracks and off of the slush. Because they keep hitting the slush and almost wiping out. Pretty straight right now. They're also going slower than I'd like to go, which isn't a bad thing, but I would like to get past them, but at the same time, I don't want to scare them. It's a decision you have to make as a truck driver, professional driver sometimes. I could easily get around them, no problem. And the wind is right, so I wouldn't be giving them a whiteout. The snow would all be blowing away from them. It's just, you have to make that decision about the safety of other people, right? If that was my wife, and if we had kids, and that was my wife and kids in that van in front of me, would I pass them still? If that was my sisters, or my family in that van, would I pass them? And risk scaring them after seeing that they probably don't exactly have the most experience driving in bad weather? I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to risk it. So why would I risk it with this family? Right? There's a lot of super truckers out there that'll just blow past them in that lane. It looks like there's a lot of snow in that left lane. It's just a light dusting that's covering it. If I wanted to, I could go around. And I'm in a hurry to get home. It's just... I don't know who this, who's in this minivan here. And it doesn't really matter who it is. Someone's in there. And I have a feeling that if I try to pass, they'll probably get scared and move too far towards the shoulder to stay away from me and hit the slush. And wipe out, possibly roll into the ditch. Maybe, maybe end up someone dying. Maybe they'll hit my truck too. But, I'll just wait. They have a smaller fuel tank than I do, so eventually they've got to pull off the road to get fuel. Even if they are going right across the country. Eventually they got to pull off the road and then I'll get past. It's not like they're driving like excessively, excessively, ridiculously slow. Just remember that when you're on the road. And you're thinking about passing somebody in the snow. And you know you can do it. Just think about it, if that was your family in that minivan, <clears throat> your wife was driving, and you know that she doesn't like winter driving, and you know that she's nervous on the ice already, if it was her in that van, would you pass her? If the answer is no, then you should probably just stay behind them. Can you tell? <laughs> it's a little bit bumpy. But some good news to talk about today, because we often talk about bad news. Look at that. 
Look at that sunset. The time is almost 6.30 in the evening. The sun is still above the horizon. That means that the daylight hours are getting considerably and noticeably longer. And that is good news. We're halfway towards the summer solstice. I'm excited. That means summer is around the corner. It's supposed to get warm this week. I believe it. So the snow has stopped. It stopped around uh, just north of Grand Forks, North Dakota. Just like the weather people said it would. I love it when they're right. It's like a special treat. Got some action going on over there on the left. What's that? There's that amber flashing lights and there's a cop behind them. What is that? Oh, it's a tow truck. And there's a RCMP officer. Somebody's getting their car impounded. It's an American, American plates. Uh-oh. I wonder if they got a DUI. That's usually one of the options that could be true if the police are there and a car is being towed away, but there could be other things as well. It could just be illegally parked there for too long or it could have been stolen and abandoned there. Or he could have been, uh, you know, going 100 miles an hour instead of 100 kilometers an hour. <laughs> it's happened. It happens actually, uh, well, I don't want to say often, but it happens. Americans come up to Canada and they don't realize or they don't know or something that our, our measurements here are in metric. So the speed limit on this road is 110 kilometers an hour. That is the same as 70 miles an hour. So all it says is maximum 110. And when Americans come up here, they think that, wow, 110 miles an hour. And they just fly down the highway and they end up getting pulled over by the RCMP. That's the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Uh, they're not mounted anymore, but they haven't, they just sort of held onto the name. They get pulled over and get their vehicle impounded and get deported. <laughs> That's, a, that's really fast. 110 miles an hour is about 170 kilometers an hour. That's fast. That's really fast. So if they don't realize at that point that, huh, maybe something's off here. I don't think the speed limit's 110 miles an hour. If they still keep going 110, well, yeah, you no sympathy here. <laughs> You know that we're metric. I don't like the fact exactly that we all switched over to metric myself, but it is an easier measurement system to understand if you're brought up with it. Much easier to understand. But uh, yeah, just a heads up. Move your, uh, change your speedometer over to kilometers an hour, over to metric if you come up here. Or if you go to Mexico too, they're also in metric. So, uh, so is the rest of the entire world, except America and like two other countries. There, there is an option. I guess if you live in the U.S. and you never have left the U.S. in a vehicle, you may not realize that your vehicle has an option to show speed in kilometers an hour. Did we make it home? Who's that over there? Who's that over there? Chevy. What you got? What you got? It's too way, way too busy for me. Way too busy and cool for me. I think he's getting to that teenager stage. Too cool for dad. So uh, last night when we got home, uh, just to close up this log, uh, it was a pretty stressful night because we got home and realized that our roof was still leaking. Uh, we expected it to. We're getting it fixed in spring once the snow and ice is melted off, but 
Uh, we got a whole bunch of new leaks coming through here now. Uh, came through there earlier this year. There, look at all this here. It's bad. It's bad. Uh, and that there, we got some coming through here. And the worst part, when we got home last night, the most frustrating part of all, in the bedroom, there was a bed here. Leaked right onto our mattress. Soaked the whole thing. Well, soaked a good part of it, so that's, that's where we're at right now. The, the reason the roof is leaking is because the people who lived here before us redid the roof and they redid it wrong. There's a part where our, we have a porch right outside of here and that roof is at a different angle than the house, than the house roof. And there's a little valley right above that, right? And they did it wrong. They didn't put any tar paper or anything underneath these shingles, right? The valley. And what's happening is we're getting ice dams. There's about four inches of ice that have built up that we didn't realize soon enough and it's pushing the water up underneath the shingles. And now that it's getting warmer outside, finally, that's nice. It's melting and it's coming through the nail holes into our attic and coming through into our house. So we've already talked to our lawyers about it because uh, it's clear that this problem has been here since long before we bought this property. So they're looking into what they can do legally with the previous owners uh, before we actually go after them because they sold us a house under false pretense. They told us that there was no roof leaking and there's obvious evidence in the attic that this has happened before and they, there's no way they didn't know about it. Uh, we've talked to our insurance, our home insurance, and we were waiting for them to get back to us. I'm gonna call them again tomorrow and see what happens. And other than that, uh, my cousin Will, who's driving truck right now, he used to be a roofer. And we're gonna call up his old company because he says that they're the best and I believe him. And get them to come give us a quote and see how much it'll cost for them to replace our entire roof, look into the attic, fix everything in there. And uh, once we have that quote, we'll be able to give that to the insurance as well because they're gonna be asking for that. And if insurance won't cover it because it's an old house, wear and tear, because insurance companies are in it for profits, they're not in it to pay out then we'll uh, probably be saving up this whole year as much as we can. Save, 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 save. And uh, hopefully be able to get it done later this summer. Maybe in late August before it starts getting a little more rainy in September. And that's that. If not, well, we probably could make it through another winter. I don't want to at all. I don't want to go. I don't even want to go to the end of summer, but... If we do go through another winter, what I would have to do is every time it snows, get up on the roof and literally take a brush or a broom and just brush off all the snow so that there's absolutely no snow on our roofs so that no ice can dam. Which means that you wouldn't be able to go on any longer trips. Yeah. Which means that you make less money that way. Well, I could still go on the longer trips, yeah. It's just, I have to shovel the roof off when I get home. I can't wait for it to warm up. You're right. Yeah, but the sooner the better. I'd still have to go on long trips. I still still got to work. It's a little disappointing that now I can't go on the truck because of this. I got to be home to empty the buckets and mop up the mess constantly. And I was yeah. going to go this week. Yeah, she was going to come with us to BC. And now she's got to stay home and babysit the house. Because when this water does leak through, we can't let it sit on these floors for very long because it'll destroy the floors. We already are going to replace them, but I don't want to do them this year when we're already doing the roof. Yeah, that's not realistic. And so, they are beautiful floors. They just weren't put down properly, so they need to be ripped up anyways because look at all yeah. these cracks between the between the panels or the yeah. boards. It's not well, well done, but it is a beautiful floor. We want something just like it. Just maybe a little more waterproof. Yeah, a waterproof floor, because when it leaks out of here, down to here, it gets into these cracks, right? And then the wood swells up, and then you get these big, ugly bumps in your floor, and it looks terrible. You yeah. think this is real wood? I think this is vinyl. But either way, it still swells. It, the material still absorbs the water. So that's what's going on this year for us. We've got to redo the roof, and then after that, we've got to redo the inside, 
redo all of this drywall, redo the whole roof, and then eventually we'll, we want to gut this whole house eventually and, and redo it all anyway. Over time. Over time. But we're going to start with the roof this year and maybe next year and maybe through the winter we can start inside the house. Life, right? Life. Yep, that thing. Yep, that thing they call life. Likes to kick you around every now and then, but we'll get through it. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. I've been talking for long enough at the end of the day. Take care. Tomorrow we'll be headed in the truck again towards BC. Just me and Diesel.